Hi everyone. You just finished your astro image and you're scrolling around and then you notice some thing in the image. Let's figure out what it is together for free. Welcome to SETI Astro. There are a lot of different tools out there that you can figure out what's in your image. Today I want to just highlight some free ones that are out there so regardless of what software you're currently using to stack, align, process your image, we can still figure out what those objects are in your image. I'll have links in the description for all the tools we use. The very first thing we need to do is plate solve the image so the software knows where in the sky we're looking and what we're looking for. Astrometry.net is an excellent free web tool to do this. Uh, the link will be in the description. You will just browse for your image and upload it. And it already is set up to automatically determine the scale uh, and the size and it should be able to have a successful plate solve in roughly a minute or so. Did load in three examples that I wanted to highlight today just to get everybody familiar with how I go about figuring out the different objects in my images. I have one of the Tulip Nebula. I had another one with the Owl Nebula and M108. And another of a uh, part of the Veil Nebula. For the Tulip Nebula, this really happened to me. I was so focused on looking at the various structures over here with the dust columns, the tulip itself with bow shock, and then Cygnus X1, which is a black hole orbiting this star here, creating this gorgeous oxygen-3 bow shock, that I never even noticed some of the structures over here. And I noticed this little guy off to the right. Definitely looks like a planetary nebula. I hadn't seen it listed anywhere before and I had to go on a little hunt to try to determine what it was. So after loading the image in astrometry.net, it finished plate solving. The next thing to do will be to download the new FITS image. Uh, there's a link right here for it. There's also another uh, nice feature where you could view your image in a web browser where it'll take you to that portion of the sky and overlay your image on a backdrop of the Digital Sky Survey. The main tool I use is Aladdin, which is free. There is a light version that you can open in your browser and then a full featured desktop version that uh, is best to use. It has a huge number of libraries and a ton of optimization, but even in its default state, it is very powerful in trying to determine what's in your images. When you first load Aladdin, this is the screen you'll get. There's a search bar up here where you can search for objects and it will start taking you to the various locations. I always like starting off by just searching for the object that will be looking near and then we'll overlay our image onto it. It is a very powerful search bar. You could type in RA and DEC, you could type in various NGCs, Sharpless numbers, Messier numbers, and uh, just hit enter. And it is very good at figuring out what you're trying to find. So I just searched for the, the Sharpless designation of the Tulip Nebula and it took it over to it. It currently has uh, the Digital Sky Survey as the backdrop. Next, we'll go ahead and load in our image that we downloaded from Astrometry by going to Load Local File. And then you need to find your file that you downloaded. Now, when you first load it, it just puts it over top of it and doesn't actually have any bearing to the lower layer. So what you'll want to do is click the checkbox on the lower layer and then click the 
white box to show our image on top of the Digital Sky Survey image. And here's my image on top of the Digital Sky Survey image. Now in its default configuration, like I said, Aladdin is very powerful and it usually is just a matter of clicking on your mystery object and it determining what it is. There it is. Planetary Nebulae G070 plus O2. You can go ahead and click on that link and it'll open another browser for you. When the browser opens, it'll give you the basic information that it has in the Sinbad catalog with coordinates and various other items. And then below it, there is actually various identifiers that you may find it as. And if there's any external archives, there'll be links down here as well that you can click on. And it shows you the various archives that it's found in. Another object that you could search for in this particular image is actually the star that we think has that black hole. And just clicking on it right away gives the designation. It's a high mass X-ray binary. And again, you can go ahead and click that to open a new browser. And this time, there's a lot of information around that particular star. Again, coordinates will have spectral types, parallax, uh, various fluxes, all the different identifiers for it. If it's been in any collections, archives, you could either go ahead and look up like the Gaia data on it where it'll list out all the information that Gaia pulled down from it, including its actual uh, measured parallax and it's a uh, 0.44 milli arc seconds of parallax and you can go ahead and convert that to actual uh, distance. Convert between those milli arc seconds of arc to actual distance that we would know. The rule is uh, one arc second is one parsec. So you would take your milli arc seconds here, so that's three zeros, four, four, three, nine. Take the inverse of that. Now this is in parsecs, and roughly 3.26 parsecs to light years. We're left with 7,300 light years away to that star. Now quickly, I'd like to show just two more examples. One image of the owl and the other uh, part of the veil and what we could find in there. I've loaded my image of the owl into Aladdin and we can go ahead and uh, click around to some of these objects. All right there's M97 but there's this little tiny galaxy off and you can go ahead and click that to pull up this particular galaxy. There's, a, there's just a lot of galaxies in this image. Here's a really faint one. We'll see if that's in the catalog. And then again, you can go ahead and click on it. This is a well cataloged one. This one even has a redshift associated with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out how far away that particular galaxy is. For converting redshift, I like using this particular site uh, where you could just put in the uh, redshift of it and click flat and it'll give it to you in uh, the most modern estimates of Hubble constant, omegas, and various other items. So that particular galaxy says it has a redshift here of 0 0.05736. And then you just click flat and it tells you what its distance is. It is 796 million light years away. Now I have my image of part of the veil loaded into Aladdin. You can see the digital sky survey of the rest of the veil. And the 
one particular spot I had noticed in this image was this little streak here. It didn't quite look like it was part of the main structure of the remnant itself, so let's investigate. Clicking on it does indeed show that it is a galaxy, and pulling up the browser for that particular galaxy, there is not a whole lot of information on it, but it does give the fluxes and angular size along with the full two mass description of it. So it is a galaxy and not part of the main structure of the veil, which I always find uh, interesting to just look around your image and explore and see what you can find. Now with Aladdin, there are a ton of various data sets that you could look through and layer up here on the side. Um, Hyperlita is a pretty popular one as well, where there is just a ton of um, non-stellar objects in there. And you can go ahead and uh, click them and it'll try to search for the various items within your, uh, within your image. And for this one, I loaded uh, the data for the galaxies. And you can see that it does have references for the particular galaxy down here we are looking at. And it has various uh, different references and names associated with it. But there's a lot to do in Aladdin. This is not a full tutorial on it. I just like to use it for the initial baseline in investigating what objects there are in my images. I hope you found this information useful and allows you to start exploring your images more fully and trying to figure out the objects and the science within it. Please comment, like, and subscribe.